Is Loki going to end up ruling the TVA, being the next Kang the Conqueror or he who remains and controlling the multiverse and time itself? That is essentially what Loki is asking himself and the problem that he is dealing with in episode one. That and you know, trying to fix his time slipping and not turn into spaghetti, which he successfully does. But could Loki's glorious purpose actually be to become the ruler of the TVA? Loki season two, episode one starts off with a recap of everything that happened in season one. And the recap ends with the most important part of the finale of season one. He who remains telling Loki and Sylvie that essentially he created the TVA so the entire multiverse wouldn't be destroyed by his variants. And he gave Loki and Sylvie a choice. Kill him and then you have an infinite amount of Kang the Conquerors coming, all seeking war and domination. Or the two of them could take over the TVA, return as its rulers, and keep, essentially, the peace. Now Loki wanted time to think about this because he didn't know what the right choice was because it's not so black and white, it's not so plain and simple. However, Sylvie set on revenge and also partly not believing He Who Remains, simply kicked Loki through a time door and killed He Who Remains. This results in Loki ending up back at the TVA. However, as we discover, he ends up in the TVA back in time in the past. Now, based off of what we learned about the TVA before, this shouldn't have been possible. The TVA exists outside of space and time. And even when Mobius takes Loki to OB, even OB says it's impossible to time slip in the TVA. That is because they exist outside of space and time. It shouldn't be possible, but it is. However, at one point in time, Loki does mention that Sylvie uses he who remains time pad to send him back. So not just a normal, regular TVA employee temp pad, but he who remains, the person who literally controls time, the sacred timeline and the multiverse itself, his time pad, which probably does have the capabilities of sending somebody through time, even at the TVA. Of course, OB also mentions that since there are so many branch timelines, that could also be the reason as well. The TVA is currently being overloaded, the time loom with all of the new timelines trying to form it into one timeline, and that could also be the cause. And this is obviously one of the big issues for Loki in episode one. Now there is something important to mention that the beginning or the recap of episode one of season two does not actually show us. In the very last episode in the finale where Loki is sent back to the TVA in Loki season one, we hear Hunter B-15 and Mobius talking and Mobius says that's what, 63 new branches in this unit alone, and Hunter B-15 says, does he want us to just let them all branch? Now this is important because she says he, and she is referring to he who remains because remember they are in the past. Loki is now in a timeline, in a time period where he who remains controls the TVA openly as their ruler. He has not invented the guise of the timekeepers yet. He hasn't yet erased everyone's memory. So it's important to note that he is there somewhere. And it looks like Hunter B-15 and Mobius know who he is they know that he is the leader there are statues of him everywhere so keep that in mind a kang does exist with his suit because we can see the statue of him of him wearing his suit which we learn gives him a lot of power we learned that from ant-man and the wasp quantumania a kang exists in that timeline and even though loki managed to fix his time slipping we might visit the past again in future episodes episode one opens with a shot of kang the conqueror's statue and then we see loki running away from Mobius, Hunter B-15, and TVA agents. He gets surrounded. He has no idea what's going on, but he tries to plead to Mobius, in which Mobius replies, I don't know you. And this, of course, is because Loki is in the past. We see the giant TVA city in the background, and if you notice, this does kind of look very similar to the city that Kang built inside of the Quantum Realm in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which of course makes sense because the TVA was created by Kang. Loki jumps off the ledge, jumping into a floating truck, in which they then crash into one of the main rooms that monitors the timeline in which Loki sees Casey. Loki gets out of the truck and then we see the truck fall to the ground and it sounds like the truck crashes, but Loki says she'll be fine and if you notice in the background, the truck does come back into the frame driving off in the air, smoke coming out of it. And another thing you can notice is that there are multiple statues of Kang the Conqueror in the background of some of these shots here. So the entire city knows who Kang the Conqueror is. So again, he's around somewhere in this time. Now, the most important part of the scene is that the monitor that's hanging falls to the ground and it cracks the marble on the ground. Casey doesn't know who Loki is and then Loki time slips again and he ends up in the same exact spot. This is also another very important detail 
tell Loki when he time slips, he is just going through time. He is not actually going through space. If you notice, every time that he time slips, he ends up in the exact same place, whether that's the past, present, or future. He never physically moves anywhere. So he doesn't go through space just through time. So Loki tries to plead to Casey because he knew him, or I should say knows him in the future, but since they're in the past, Casey doesn't know who he is, so he rats him out, but then he time slips again to the exact same place in the future where he sees the crack on the floor. He sees Casey who recognizes him now and he asks how long that crack's been there and Casey says since as long as he can remember, which tells Loki that he is indeed going back and forth in time. Throughout this episode, we see him go to the past, to the present, and to the future as well. So Casey is very confused, but he tries to take Loki to Mobius in which Loki time slips again. Casey goes up to Mobius in Hunter B-15 and he tells them that Loki was here, but then he just vanished out of thin air. Here we learn that Miss Minutes is offline, and that's because we know, of course, she's bad. She worked for He Who Remains. Meanwhile, Mobius and Hunter B-15 are trying to decide what they're going to do. The timeline is branching out like crazy, but they don't want to prune them because those are real people with real lives. And Hunter B-15 essentially says that everybody at the TVA should know the truth and should get to experience their own lives on the timeline somewhere. But of course, Mobius explains it's not necessarily that easy because these people believe in the timekeepers. They believe the timekeepers are their gods who saved them and created them for the sole purpose of working at the TVA. So to blow their minds by telling them that they themselves are actually variants has to really be handled delicately. From here we meet X5 who goes on to play a very, very big role in this series. He asks Mobius about the jet ski in which Mobius is more than happy to talk about jet skis. However, of course we know that X5 is being condescending and he informs Mobius and Hunter B-15 that now that Renslayer is gone, there's a new judges council and they want to see Mobius in the war room. Now they leave and ultimately Loki comes back. Now this is one of the only times Loki appears in a different room than where he vanished from, but a good explanation for this could be is that simply in the past, Loki moved. He moved to the location that he appeared back in. Because most, if not all of the other times, he appears exactly in the same spot where he was in the future or the past. This is just a one-off time, which again can be explained by him moving locations in the past. Mobius and Hunter B-15 get to the war room where out comes Hunter D-90. He sees Mobius immediately looks to the ground because he is embarrassed and ashamed and he tells him, I'm sorry, I was just doing my job. And that is because he is the one who pruned him in Loki season one, episode four. Now at the time, he did not know that the TVA was a sham. He did not know that he was a variant and he had a life somewhere. He didn't know any of that yet. Hunter B-15 would go on to show him that in which she would change his mind and he would become essentially kind of a good guy. So he says he was just doing his job. What's funny is that he doesn't actually say that he's sorry. He just kind of keeps looking at the ground, embarrassed and ashamed. But Mobius is a good guy and says, you know what, you were following orders. It's actually Renslayer that owes me the apology. And here's where it gets really interesting. We see Loki appearing in the past in the same spot where he was in the future Future and he walks into the war room. Now, nobody is there. However, it looks very different than Loki has seen before. And we see statues on the wall of he who remains. Then it cuts to the future, showing us that Loki is indeed in the past. And we see that the statues are covered up by a mural of the timekeepers, showing us that Kang the Conqueror really did erase everybody's memories and basically got rid of any evidence that he created the TVA. In present time, Hunter B-15 and Mobius go into the war room where they are playing a recording of Loki telling everybody the truth about the TVA, telling them that they were not created by the timekeepers, but were in fact taken from timelines and are variants of people and they had lives. On the table sits one of the heads of the android fake timekeepers that Loki cut off. And the way that they show this one shot with the head on the table and in the background is the mural of the timekeepers holding the timeline, or timelines as it appears, is really meant to show that everything that they knew, the TVA, everything they believed is not real, it's fake. The timekeepers are fake. And in the war room, in the present time, we meet two new characters, General Dox, played by Kate Dickey, and Judge Gamble, played by Liz Carr. And in the scene, you can tell that both of them are absolutely terrified of what has happened. It's just been revealed that everything that they've known their entire lives 
is fake. And as you can see, General Dox is very well decorated. She seems to have a lot of medals and ribbons, and she's clearly very high up in the TVA. And what's interesting is that if you look really closely at her medals, some of the faces on the medals kind of resemble Kang the Conqueror. So I'm wondering if these were medals that she got working for Kang, possibly in the old war, and she doesn't remember because her memory was erased. Maybe she thinks the timekeepers gave them to her, or maybe Renslayer. And Judge Gamble is obviously a judge who has sentenced many people to be pruned pretty much everyone. And they basically need to decide what to do moving forward since the timelines are branching out like crazy. And in this entire scene, you can tell that General Dox is pretty set on still reserving the sacred timeline despite what she has learned. She states that it changes nothing. Their job is to preserve the main timeline. However, Judge Gamble is much more open and she hears the cries of Hunter B-15 and Mobius stating that those timelines are actual people and all they've been doing by preserving the main timeline is killing millions or billions or possibly even trillions of people, so they need to stop pruning. And Judge Gamble says that her entire life she's always given off the same verdict as a judge, guilty, and had the people pruned, because the timekeeper said so, and you can look at her face and tell how upset she is, and then you see Mobius and you can tell how upset he is as well, because they have realized that they have indeed been killing those millions or billions or trillions of people. That's a lot of people to have on your conscience. And it does seem like the person in charge here, the highest rank here, is Judge Gamble because she issues the order that the TVA will no longer prune the time branches. And that's right when Loki comes back. Loki finally sees Mobius and he determines that he is in the present. Mobius knows who he is. Loki says he found him and then he looks to where the statues are, but they're not there. They're covered up by the mural. So of course he reveals them and he said, that's who did it. That's who created this place and took your lives. And this makes it pretty much real for Judge Gamble and for General Dox. It's not just hearsay anymore. It's not just the testimonies of people. They are witnessing it right in front of their faces. However, General Dox asked Loki where Sylvie was. And when they leave, she takes Hunter X5 aside and says the timekeepers were fake, but the warnings were real and that they're going to find Sylvie. And here kind of starts the biggest dilemma for Loki and actually the TVA itself. And I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty big ordeal for Loki in the entire series. And that is the question of, is the TVA actually a necessary evil? Was he who remains technically doing the right thing, however bad it was, to save the entire multiverse. Now that he's gone, are more evil variants going to come and start multiversal war and essentially destroy the entire multiverse? This is what Loki is telling Mobius when they exit the war room. He's essentially telling Mobius Sylvie wanted to kill him, but how could she be so sure? Because in the Loki season one finale, Loki was trying to stop Sylvie so they could just take a second to think to decide on if this is actually the right move to kill him and allow more evil variants to come and destroy the multiverse. And Loki even tells Mobius, we got to the man at the end of time and he made sense. He said he thought it was about freeing the timeline, but that's only going to bring more war and more variants. And Loki continues to say there was no simple choice. It's not black and white. Maybe he was right because that is what's coming. And he points to one of the murals that shows a bunch of different Kang the Conquerors at war with each other. It's interesting that he chose to keep that mural. Of course, it shows the multiversal war before the timekeepers came, so it doesn't really mean anything to the TVA since they wouldn't know anything about who started the wars. They just believe that variants did. But it's interesting that he left it as it was, showing his own variants and not covering them up. So Loki explains everything that happened, and he basically wants to plea his case again to General Dox and Judge Gamble. But Mobius says, we got to get you to stay here. Loki wants to focus on he who remains, but Mobius makes a joke and says, I need a Loki who remains. So Mobius is going to take him to see OB, and it looks like OB is kind of in a secretive place because they go in the cafeteria and then they go through an exit door. And it looks like a door that normal employees don't typically go through. They also pass a poster in the cafeteria that says, minimize chit chat in the cafeteria, please limit your lunch break to 17 minutes. Doesn't seem like such a good life working for the TVA. And we actually do get a little confirmation that nobody really goes through this door and visits OB because OB states that Mobius was his last visitor 400 years ago. Now, when they first get there, you can tell that Mobius doesn't really know him. He doesn't even remember his name. But of course, OB remembers him, especially since he was the last visitor he got. 
Obi does repairs and advancements, and as he will later go on to state in the episode, he actually wrote the TVA handbook. So he's a pretty big deal, and of course his character is going to play an insanely huge role in season 2. Now this next scene is insanely clever writing, and I believe could play a very important part in a future episode of Loki season 2. We'll break it down, but first, big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Many of you probably know by now that I personally use HelloFresh a lot because for me, it simply makes sense. I have a pretty busy schedule in my day-to-day -day life and HelloFresh just makes eating good meals a lot easier for me with over 40 different recipes that I could choose from each week. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. They literally make it as easy as it possibly could be. The meals are very quick to make and they do include some 15 minute meals as well. It takes the hassle out of mealtime, but it also can save you money. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress of worrying about what you're going to eat and you save money. So if interested, go to HelloFresh.com 50Cosmic and use code 50Cosmic for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com 50Cosmic and use code 50Cosmic for 50% off plus free shipping. Now here we have a really awesome scene where Loki time slips, but time isn't going to work in the typical fashion that the MCU is used to, or even that the TVA is used to. Because essentially what we have here is a scene where the past and the present are kind of happening at the same time. Loki time slips back in time, again in the same spot, so he winds up right in front of OB. OB in the present and the past cannot believe his eyes because time slipping shouldn't be possible, but clearly something is up. Obi says something else must be going on because he's never seen that before, but right as he says that, he recalls that he has seen that one other time in the past with Loki who is presently talking to him. So we are experiencing the past and the present kind of at the same time here. Now, typically based off of everything that we've learned in the MCU about time, this is not how time would typically work. In fact, according to how the TVA technically works, this in turn should create a branch timeline, not actually affect the future. And this is what they explained in Avengers Endgame as well. The Hulk stated changing the past does not change the future, but that is exactly what is happening here. So I'm sure they'll give us an explanation for this, at least I hope they do at some point in time in this series. We've stated a few theories in this video, but if you have any of your own, drop them down in the comments down below. And they do confirm this is happening simultaneously. Mobius says, wait, he's talking to you in the past right now and you're just now remembering it. And Dobie in the past basically says in order to prevent time slipping, to stop it, that person would need a temporal aura extractor. Obi in the future says that he does not have one until he does because Obi in the past starts to build one for Loki. And bam, all of a sudden, Obi has one in the present because one was built in his past, which is currently Loki's present as well. This is actually very, very clever writing, and I commend them for this scene. But this is where it gets a little complicated for Loki and Mobius when Obi explains how everything has to be done. Obi says that he has to get to the temporal loom and pull Loki directly out of the time stream. Obi warns Mobius that if he takes too long out there, the skin will get peeled from his body, and this, obviously, and understandably, concerns Mobius. But Loki hears some bad news as well. He has to tear himself from every point in time and space, aka he has to prune himself because that will then release him from all the points in time, keeping him from slipping, and then hopefully the extractor pulls him to the present. And if it doesn't, he'll get turned into spaghetti. Now at this point, Obi didn't know about the branch timelines. So they all head to the temporal loom, which is where they needed to go anyways. Hunter B-15 joins them and Obi basically explains that too many timelines are going into the temporal loom and it's not built to have that many, which is causing the power surges and could be the reason that Loki is time slipping. So they get to the temporal loom and it's guarded by blast doors. And on the floor, you can read, Danger, temporal radiation levels escalate exponentially beyond this threshold. Likelihood of spaghettification increases 7,000%. Proceed with caution. So we have an official term of turning into spaghetti, which is spaghettification, which is the threat that Loki is about to face. Now, what's really interesting about this blast door is that it really looks like the X-Men door to enter Cerebro. It's a giant X with a circle in the middle. It even has some sort of a glass eye component to it that seems like it could be the scanner that scans Professor Xavier's eye to open the door. Now, we know the X-Men, specifically the original X-Men that I am referring to, Professor Xavier's X-Men, from the 2000 movie, we know they're returning in Deadpool 3, and we know that the TVA and Mobius himself are going to be a big part 
of Deadpool 3 as well. So perhaps there is some type of X-Men connection here, or perhaps it's just a cool little X-Men Easter egg that they did here. The door even opens the same with the circle remaining intact and the X splitting in half. So if anything, it is an X-Men Easter egg, but maybe it doesn't connect to Deadpool 3. Now, OB explains what the time loom is. He says that it's raw time turned into a physical timeline. This could essentially be the multiverse turned into one time. How that could happen, we are not really sure. We're unsure of how the time loom works, but we know that we'll run into Victor Timely eventually, and we've seen from the trailers that he himself was working on his own time loom, so perhaps it'll be explained. However, OB states that it was not constructed to be able to pull together so many branches. He specifically says the word branches. So these are branches of time. So essentially it is kind of shrinking down the multiverse to one universe. So OB explains that there are essentially too many timelines going into the time loom and that's causing it to overload. And that's a big issue because it's the heart of the TVA. So if it overloads and explodes, the TVA is done. So he says he's got to close the blast doors so he can work on expanding it essentially, because the first option was pruning the timelines. However, they now know that that is killing millions of people for every branch they prune. So the only option left is to expand the time loom. However, once the blast doors are closed, Loki can't be pulled back in. So it's now or never. Unfortunately, Loki time slips. And this time, however, it's to the future. Mobius, during that present time, wrote skin in dust on one of those computers. Obviously, losing his skin is kind of bugging him, which it would anybody else. But that specific scene shows us that Loki did indeed go to the future, which he himself realizes thanks to Mobius writing skin. Luckily though, when Loki went to the future, he still has the timer that is synced to the loom. And again, this is sort of a past and future moment happening at the same time because it's all the present for Loki. Now Mobius suits up to go out to the time loom and Loki frantically searches for a time stick so he can prune himself. To top it all off at the same time, Hunter D90 comes in and says that General Dox and her troops are essentially going after Sylvie. More on that in a bit. Loki searches for a prune stick and Mobius goes out to the time loom where he is essentially getting hit with time. Obi explained that if he doesn't make it back and the blast doors close, he'll basically sit there and age at a very insanely rapid rate. His suit will decay, he will age, and his skin will fall off and he'll die. So essentially he is getting hit with time or raw time as Obi explained. Now, unfortunately the timer hits green and Loki is not ready. Obi gives Mobius plenty of warnings, but eventually decides he has to shut it down. He has to close the blast doors. He has to protect the TVA. And Mobius starts to head back, although it doesn't look like he's going to make it. And even OB says he's not going to make it. And it really doesn't look like Loki's going to make it either. But fortunately, we see Sylvie coming out of an elevator in which Loki is then pruned. Now, I didn't catch this the first time, but the second time watching this, I noticed that Loki gets pruned from behind. So it doesn't look like Sylvie is the one who pruned him because Loki was looking at Sylvie as she was coming out of the elevator. Plus, not to mention, she was using both of her hands to open the elevator. But if you take a look here at the scene, it is very clear that Loki got pruned from behind. So it doesn't seem like it was Sylvie. Or if it was, perhaps it was a future or past version of Sylvie. Whoever it was, Loki and Mobius are really lucky that person was there to prune Loki because that shoots him into the present time and he runs into Mobius, sending them both flying back through the blast doors, making them safe. Mobius still has his skin and Loki is not turned into spaghetti. Now, Loki was in the future and saw Sylvie. So when he gets back to the present time, which is technically the past of where he just was, he tells Mobius they need to find Sylvie because clearly she gets involved again somehow. Meanwhile, we find out that General Dox has gathered a lot of artillery and troops and is going somewhere. And it looks like she is going to prepare for an attack. And Hunter B-15 even states that all this is just for Sylvie implying that no way they don't need all of that just to get Sylvie something's going on here and that's the end of the episode until we get to the post credit scene Marvel is back with its post credit scenes for its Disney plus shows which we're not complaining about at all and it shows us what Sylvie is currently up to now just as Loki season two episode one that we just watched starts off immediately where they left off in the season finale of Loki that's what we're seeing for Sylvie in the post credit scene this is immediately after she kills he who remains she then comes to this timeline 
for whatever reason, and decides that she wants a McDonald's. Great sponsor placement right there. However, it does serve some great meaning. It shows us where current Sylvie is. As you can tell from the outfit she's wearing and the scars and blood on her, this is immediately after her fight with Loki, after everything they went through with Eliath, and after she killed He Who Remains. So she gets in and doesn't really know how to order food because she's been running from the TVA her entire life, plus not to mention Asgard doesn't have McDonald's, and places around Asgard and other planets don't have McDonald's as well. So she's not too familiar with restaurants on Earth, but basically says she doesn't want anything with a face, no rats or anything gross like that. The guy at the stand says, well, what do you want to try? And Sylvie looks around and she sees something that she never got to have. People at peace living their own lives. She never got to live her own life. She was running from the TVA since she was a child, and she's never stopped. Her entire purpose from since she was a baby was to take down the TVA. So she says that she wants to try it all because she believes that it's all over now. She killed the person who was in charge of the TVA. Her mission to her is now done. She doesn't know anything that's happening at the TVA right now. She doesn't know that the entire multiverse is at jeopardy because she essentially didn't believe he who remains. So when she says, I want to try it all, she is talking about the food in a sense, but she's also talking about life. She wants to try having her own life out. And thanks to the McDonald's promotions that we've seen, we do know that she will be here at McDonald's at least for a little bit. And that's the end of Loki season two, episode one, what did you think about this? I personally really loved episode one. I think it's a fantastic start to the new season, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing where this all goes, and especially how it ends going into Deadpool 3 and Avengers Secret Wars. But overall, the tone feels just like season one. It feels just like what we watched in the finale. They introduce some new characters, which I absolutely love. I love OB. And the other characters like General Dox and Judge Gamble really add to the show. They add to the tone and the seriousness.